welcome back spiritual crusaders and thanks for joining us on our youtube channel my name is cecily conover and i'm ashton conover and i'm kevin conover for more amazing spiritual content go check us out on spiritualcrusade.com make sure to share this video with family and friends so we are doing a come follow me for 18 through for may 18 through 24 and then chapters are 20 mosiah 26 through 28 it's 25 through 28 25 yeah, it's nice. Um, so we chose a few of our favorite verses from the chapters, and we're just gonna share them, and we're gonna talk about them for a little bit. So the first, our first one is Mosiah 27, 25 um, through 26. Sorry. Okay, and it says, and the Lord said unto me. Marvel not that all mankind, yea, and men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, must be born again, yea, born of God, changed from their carnal state, uh, carnal and fallen state, um, to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming His sons and daughters, and thus they become, um, they become new creatures. And unless they um, do this, they can be, they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. So, um, so it talks about how we have to be born again. And if you don't know what that means, it, for, so it talks about it just a little, a little bit, like what it means. And it says it has, we have to come out of our, um, carnal and fa um, fallen state. And so when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they fell to, a like this state that where we know right from wrong and where we can, die and where we aren't immortal and so we have to get out of this fallen state because the world is low and so think of it as the world is down here and we have to rise above the world and we have to go above the unwor like the unrighteousness and we have to have faith and so much that we are born again in righteousness and in the lord and um and then i looked up what um it said like the footnote for born of god and it says uh it said to go to mosiah 5 um 7 so that one says and now because of the covenant which ye have made uh, made ye shall be called the children of christ his sons and his daughters for behold this is the day or this day he has spiritually begotten you for he said for ye sorry for ye say that your hearts are changed through faith on his name. Therefore, ye are born of him and have become his sons and daughters. So I think it's that just basically just tells us like what it means to be born again. And it means to become his sons and daughters and to be born of him. And I like how it says, um, changed through faith of on his name and also it says that we have to change our hearts and um but the footnote also said that to go to um alma 5 14 and that says and now behold i ask of you my brethren of the church have ye spiritually been born of god have ye received his image in your um Content, um, sorry, um, continences. <laughs> um, um, have ye re, um ex experienced the um this mighty change in your hearts? So, I it's cool how it says that it's so it's asking us have we done all the things that we have to do to be born again? And I like how it says. Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? And it's just, it says how it's like um, this mighty change that we have to, like, we have to literally have our hearts changed to, and be, we have to be, it's not like that we're actually reborn, but it's being spiritually reborn. And we have to be, we'll be raised to a higher level and we'll be, um, will have to be like will we have to be put um onto like okay we'll have to be like held to a higher um level than the world and 
we'll just, yeah, basically that. So, um, Kembry, do you have any examples of how we can prepare to be born again? Um, well, you could, like, go to the temple, and you could, like, do your daily scripture study, and also you could study, um, the Come Follow Me. And then also there's this really good book that is called Following the Light of Christ into His Present. And it's about this guy that has his, a blog, and he, like, um, did, like, he, like, told, like, great stories about his mission and, like, of his life. And then when he died, his wife, like, made a book out of it. And so that's a really good book, and you should read that. <laughs> yeah, and it shows all his good, like, his spiritual experiences throughout his life. Yeah. And it really helped me come closer to God and to just, like, recognize things that I need to change in my life. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Kembry. Yeah. Um, yeah, all those were super good examples. And if we just continue in righteousness, then we will be born again, and we will, and we'll just, yeah, basically, and our hearts will be changed. Um, so the next one is Mosiah 26. Uh, it's 15 through 18. It says, Blessed art thou, Alma, and blessed are they who were baptized in the waters of Mormon. Thou art blessed because of thy exceeding faith in the words alone of my servant of Vinadi. And blessed are they um, because of their exceeding faith in the words alone which thou hast, um, hast spoken unto them. And blessed are thou because of thou um, because thou hast established the church among his people, sorry, this people, and um, they shall be established, and they shall be, um, they shall be my people. Yea, blessed is this people who were willing to bear my name, for in my name shall they be called, um, called, and they are mine. These are so. These scriptures are so cool, because. It just talks about how, like, so if you guys don't know the story, it's about how Alma was, he brought all the, so Abinadi told, went to the king and told him, like, that they need to repent and what they're doing is wrong and, like, basically things and like that. And um, Alma was the only one that believed him. And... So the Lord is saying, like, blessed are, blessed is he that, that he believed him. And back then, he didn't, they didn't have any, like, they didn't have as much, like, scriptures or they didn't have a church or anything really to, like, teach them of God. And so, but they only had, like, the stories that were passed down from generation to generation. And that the parents would tell the kids and then they would tell their kids. They only had those stories. And... But then when Alma went and taught all the people, they he said, blessed are they that were baptized in Mormon. And blessed are the people who only believed in that in their, his words. And um, because they didn't have anything except for stories. Um, like I said, they, they had no way to like post it for everyone to see and for everyone to um, be able to like know and yeah, basically, and they couldn't teach as much and as easily. So the next one is Mosiah 26, 29 through 31. And it says, therefore, I say unto you, go, and whosoever transgresseth um, against me, he, um, him shall ye judge according to the sins um, which he has committed. And if he could um, com confess his sins before thee and me, and repenteth in the sincerity of his heart, him shall um, ye forgive, and I will forgive him also. Yea, and as often as my people repent, will I forgive them their trespasses against me. And ye um, shall also forgive one another your trespasses. For verily I say unto you, he that forgiveth not his neighbor, um, his neighbor's trespasses, when he says that he repents, the same hath brought himself under con um, condemnation. So it just talks. So it talks about how we have to repent, or like if we repent, he'll forgive us. And if 
others repent of like upon us then we have to forgive them and so and so the, so there was this par, um, parable that Jesus taught and it's he just taught, it said so the story was there was this guy that came to that owed the king debt and he went to the king and was like and it was a large amount of money okay and he was like I don't have the money like please just forgive me I will pay it back next time like I'll you know like I'll please just don't have me pay back right now because I don't have the money to do it and the king if they if he didn't forgive them him then he would have to go to jail and so when the king said like yeah it's fine like I forgive you you've uh, like, repented you've noticed what you've done wrong and you've like come to me and said sorry and so he forgave him and then when the guy left this other guy came to that guy and was like um hey like I don't have the money you um, I owe you and that money that he owed him was just this little piece of money like it wasn't a lot at all it didn't even matter that much and he said like he was like please can I just please not pay that um that debt because I don't have it and the guy was after he just got forgiven by the king, he just got mad and he's like, no. And he sent him to jail away from his family and his kids and his wife and um, and all his friends. And he sent him to jail for this little amount of money. And one of the servants of the king saw him do that and was like, and went and told the king and was like, like this guy that you just forgave wouldn't forgive this other guy. And, when it, and he sent him to jail for it. And the king was, he got really angry and he's like, why wouldn't he forgive him? Like, I just forgave him. So he called him back to his court and was like, um, you have to go to jail because I'm not forgiving those those um, anymore, the debt. And he, he had the other guy come out of jail and he's like, why wouldn't you, um, why wouldn't you like forgive this guy when it was just a little bit of money? It, it didn't actually mean that much. And when I forgave you of so many things. And I think it's just so important in our life because we, a lot of times we don't forgive people of these little things, but those, that thing is actually so small compared to what, what uh, compared to all the sins that we've made in our life because none of us are perfect and we all make mistakes and make, and we all sin. And so when Heavenly Father and Jesus, they, when they forgive us of our sins, we have to forgive other people because it's it just like the guy when he, it was just this little amount of money that didn't actually mean that much and wouldn't matter. And so I think it was just cool how yeah, it cool. just, yeah, it just shows how that like you need to forgive other people yeah. because then we're not going to. And then also at the end of these scriptures, it says the same hath brought himself under um, condemnation, and it's like we will if we don't forgive others, we're gonna get the same punishment as them. Okay, so the last one is Mosiah twenty seven thirty one. It says, "Yea, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall uh, every tongue confess before him. Yea, even." At the last day, when all men shall stand to be judged, shall stand to be judged of him, of him, then shall he, shall they confess that he is God? Then shall they confess that who lived without God in the world, that the judgment of the, of any of of any everlasting punishment is is just upon them, and they shall quake and tremble, and they shall be, shrink. they shall shrink beneath beneath the glance of all of his all searching eye. To me, that means that we that. He, Oh, sorry. To me, that means that, um, that they're gonna you're fine. Go. That they're gonna bow down to him in the last days, and they're going to say that he is God. Even the people that are wicked and that say he's not, no matter how many times they deny him, 
in heaven when they're judged, they're going to know that he is God. And they're going to know that he he's real. And so so it what you do here and what you say now affects you in the other life. And we have to choose the right so then we can live with Heavenly Father again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I liked how it said at the end, it says, um, and they shall quake and tremble and shrink beneath the glance of his all searching eye. It just, it's so cool how he says that like all the people of the whole, in the whole world, even the ones that don't believe will tremble and shrink and will like know that he's the God. And like when Alma, when he, him and the sons of Messiah, when they went and, um, when they were, um, sorry, when they were like, um, being like wicked and not, <laughs> we're not doing the right things and being righteous. When the angel came, they knew without a doubt because the angel made the earth shake and made and it, their his words were like thunder, and he they knew without a doubt that he was that he was a real angel, and yeah, I like that verse a lot. Mm-hmm. So um, bye, welcome. Or, sorry, <laughs> bye. Um, come back next time, and we'll have more scriptures. And um, I'd like to bear my testimony that I know the church is true, and I know that if we work hard, then we'll be able to make it to. And we'll be able to be reborn and we'll be able to make it to heaven and to live with Jesus Christ. And I know that as we forgive other people, then we will also be forgiven of our sins. And um, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Sure. I like it to remember my testimony that I know the truth is true and I know that we could live with him again and that we could be forgiven for our sins if we forgive others. And I know that we could... Be happy up in heaven if we choose his plan and name Jesus Christ. Amen. I like to bring my testimony that I know that we can all be with Heavenly Father again. And that we, if we should like push through all the trials and the hardships in our life, then like we could be with all of our loved ones again. And like that have passed away and that we could all, all be together forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Um, Make sure to come back next week and we'll have some more scriptures and a lot more insights. And make sure to go visit spiritualcrusade.blogspot.com. I think it's .com. It's just (laughs) .com, maybe. Um, Yeah, it's just spiritualcrusade.com. And um, bye. Bye.